What's going on guys? My name is Patrick Bacon and you're watching the one and only Bacon's Drinks channel here on YouTube. And today I'm bringing you guys the best tiki cocktail you've never heard of called I Left My Wallet in La Segunda. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty crazy name, I know. I originally thought that this the cocktail name was based off of an old hip hop song called I Left My Wallet in El Segunda but apparently that's not the case. This cocktail is actually based off of and an homage to the uh, famous bakery in Tampa Bay, Florida called La Segunda Central. And this cocktail is created and served at the establishment called M. Bird in Tampa Bay, Florida. The name M. Bird actually stands for Mockingbird, which is the state bird of Florida. And I actually found this recipe in a book called Tampa with a Twist. I actually found this book when I was visiting Tampa not too long ago, and I found it at an incredible brunch spot called the Oxford Exchange. Uh, they not only do brunch, and they also have a tea bar and a coffee bar, but they also, it's called the Oxford Exchange because it's a book exchange. They got tons of books there, and this just so happened to be one of the books. And basically each page has a cocktail that is specific to a well-known restaurant or bar in the area of Tampa. I, look, I already looked on Amazon for you guys, and unfortunately I could not find this book anywhere, so I think you can only purchase this book in Tampa, unfortunately. Each cocktail I've made out of here has been absolutely incredible. And I think you guys would think the same as well. But don't worry if you're not in the Tampa area anytime soon, I will be making at least three or four cocktails from this book that I think are absolute hidden gems of the cocktail world. And all right guys, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into making the cocktail. All right guys, so we're gonna build this cocktail in a shaker tin today and we're gonna start off with a half ounce of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Always use fresh squeezed juices guys, it makes all the difference in the world. I'm also using some very tart lemons today. I make sure the lemon juice was extra tart because we're gonna be using some very rich ingredients. So if you're gonna make this cocktail, I would stay away from using like uh, Meyer's, Meyer lemons, for example, because they tend to be a little more sweet than regular lemons. All right, guys, and next we're going to be doing two thirds of an ounce of guava puree. I'm using uh, Perfect Puree from Napa Valley. This is absolutely the best guava puree on the market, in my opinion. I think all their purees are the best on the market. Uh, they got you know white peach puree, prickly pear uh, puree, they got passion fruit puree, they got all sorts of great stuff uh, for just about any cocktails that you can think of. But if you don't want to shell out the dough, there's plenty of great guava purees on Amazon. So once again, we're going to try to measure out two thirds of an ounce of puree today. And then we're gonna do one full ounce of fresh squeezed pineapple juice. Um, I completely understand if you guys wanna use canned. Uh, fresh squeezing pineapple juice is a little bit of a pain, but there's nothing like fresh pineapple juice. All right. And then we're gonna do a quarter of an ounce of M. Bird's house-made orgia. I put the recipe in the description. Don't worry. Uh, this is part of what makes this drink so unique. This orgia is very unique and absolutely delicious. Uh, I tasted some of it before I made the cocktail. And if you look in the description, the ingredients are very unique. It's basically made with almond milk, demerara sugar, and a full ounce of rum, which is very unique for orgias. The best way I can describe how this orgia tastes by itself is a very boozy ice cream. All right guys, next we're gonna do a third of an ounce of Coco Lopez. I'm just kind of mixing it up here. I haven't used Coco Lopez in a while, so. Hopefully I don't look too awkward using it. And hopefully I can measure out a third of an ounce here. All right, there we go. All right guys, and finally we get to our rum base. Uh, this recipe calls for one of my favorite Jamaican rums of all time, Smith & Cross. Mm. This stuff is absolutely amazing and it is a must have for any home bar, especially like a tiki or rum bar. Um, this stuff is rich funky and just absolutely delicious. And we're doing a full ounce of this today. It's also overproof, it's 59% alcohol, so I believe that's what, 118 proof. So it gives every cocktail a nice kick in the pants that it needs. All right guys, we're finally on our last ingredient and that will be Gosling's Dark Rum. So I'm getting some conflicting information here between the recipe and the picture of the cocktail in the book. In the recipe, it calls for three quarters of an ounce of Gosling's Dark Rum to be floated over the cocktail, however, uh, the picture of the cocktail, which looks absolutely amazing in color, does not appear to have any float going over it whatsoever. So I want to actually stay true to the picture, and we're going to do three quarters of an ounce of Gosling's uh, Bermuda Black Rum today. Gosling's is also a must-have for any home bar, especially when you're making dark and storms. 
All right, guys, now it's time to add our ice. We're going to add just one scoop of pebble ice to the tin today so we can give this a nice and quick whip shake. All right, guys, put a seal on our tin. Let's go ahead and get you shaking. So you, so you really want to kind of shake this one pretty hard uh, because we've got a lot of ingredients that uh, have a very kind of thick and heavy texture, like the guava puree. we got, of course, the Coco Lopez in there. we got that kind of heavy house-made orgia. We also got some pretty heavy flavors in there, like Smith & Cross, and of course, that rich pineapple juice. So be sure to shake until the ice is completely melted in the tin so we can get that sufficient level of dilution, really aerate that pineapple and really mix those heavy ingredients together to make sure there's not any, you know, anything chunky and any weird textures in the cocktail. All right, guys, we're gonna roll all of our ingredients today straight into this incredible bamboo Collins glass. Uh, this is from Libby Glass. You can find these on Amazon. And these are my favorite Collins glass to use for tiki. All right. Let's go ahead and roll it into the glass. Looks like all the ingredients were mixed pretty well. We got some nice aeration on the pineapple there. All right. All right, guys, now let's fill the glass the rest of the way up with crushed or pebble ice. All right. All right. And as always, I'm using pebble ice from Sonic, which is my absolute favorite ice to use for tiki cocktails. I really like the color of this cocktail. Looks like it's got kind of a pinkish, kind of uh, creamy texture going on here. All right, that should be about it. Let me press that down a little bit. All right, looks like we're completely full there. All right, guys, now it's time to garnish. We're gonna garnish with a single pineapple frond today. Just like that. And then we're gonna garnish with a cherry and wafer skewer. We're gonna put it in the drink just like that. I actually didn't have a wafer as it had called for, um, so I actually used a Kit Kat bar instead. So that's totally a Kit Kat bar uh, for the garnish in there. All right, guys, let's go ahead and give it a taste. I'm gonna sip it straight off the ice today. I absolutely love the color and the garnish there. Mmm. So that is absolutely delicious in every way. The thing that I noticed first and foremost is the texture of the drink. It has a very uh, creamy and kind of rich consistency and texture, uh, probably from the Orgia, the Coco Lopez, and the Guava Puree. I'm also getting some very light and tropical fruity notes that are from the Guava Puree, because we did use uh, two thirds of an ounce of that, and that fresh Napa Valley Puree is really coming in uh, front and center there. I'm also getting the proof and the delicious funk of that incredible Smith & Cross rum. I get a little bit of the pineapple, but I think the pineapple kind of serves more as a mouthfeel. I'm definitely tasting the rum and the guava a lot more. Then the coconutty sweetness of the Coco Lopez. It does show through, but it's definitely not one of the main flavors. I'm also getting a definite hit of sweetness from the house-made orgia. And then, of course, that, that nice fresh lemon juice comes in with some much-needed tartness to an otherwise very rich and somewhat boozy cocktail. All right, guys, with that being said, that's it. I left my wallet in La Segunda, the best tiki cocktail you've never heard of. If you are a tiki aficionado or anyone looking for any type of tropical drink for the summer, please give this a try. Yes, I do know it's gonna probably take a while to gather these ingredients. It definitely took me a while. It does kind of have some odd stuff like the house-made orgia and of course guava puree. But other than that, all of these should be pretty easy and readily available to find. All right guys, with that being said, hopefully you learned a new recipe today. And as always, please hit the like button if you like my content. If you wanna see more of my content in the future, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And as always, if you could, please leave a comment. That really helps get the algorithm going. Um, I would love to hear you guys' feedback or recommendations for future videos. I have had some recommendations for Back to the basic style. But I know a lot of you tiki heads and rum heads really like some of the more complex recipes. But no worries, um, I can accommodate everyone. Just let me know. And uh, as always, have a very safe weekend, and I will see you guys next time.